Hello everyone, welcome to the Daily Slash Weekly Race Guide. It's week 50! It's nearly the end of the year and what an interesting one we have in the background, eh? So let's have a look at the race details then. We are looking at one lap. Yes, one lap here in race A. It's a grid start. Charge control is kind of useful and we're on sports soft tyres. Now, as you can see, we are in the Toyota Yaris and we're at La Sarf. Yes, we are doing one lap of the Le Mans circuit in the Toyota Yaris. It's a little bit sketchy. It's a little bit carnage. Let's jump to that race. Here we are then at the start of the grid. As always, with the race A, the car is provided for you, so you just get to pick the colours. You don't get to put custom liveries on, which is kind of annoying here, because this would be kind of fun, to be honest with you. However, we're going to get ready for the start of the race then. So, as I said, traction control on to one. Um, it's just a little bit helpful. You'll see down on that accelerator, it just going on and off a little bit here. There you go. You just see it just a little bit useful there. I changed gear early as I changed traction control, just so I've got everything done. Back to the radar. And here we go then with one of the sketchiest cars under braking I've experienced in quite some time. So we've got the inside of the Spaniard here on the right, on the left, well on the right, he's on the left. And then towards turn one, and as it's one lap, here's the guide as well. Um, so I'll basically use the cones or the total sign as a marker. You see I'm already started to brake here. Depending on what's happening in front of you, you're going to have to be very careful. You know, so we're just trail braking there for the majority of it. We survived turn one though, uh, as we come then through turn two. You see three wide up ahead, unfortunately for Garden about to get a penalty there. Hitting down here then, it's all about just, you know, staying in your line basically. And as we head towards this left hander, on the right side you've got a barrier change um, and also the lamp post, but I'm actually using the cones if I'm truly honest. Um, you know, it's one lap, I'm literally just straight in and go here. Uh, so, so some side by side racing here, you have to be careful of shortcut penalties, as you're about to see here, I get a slight tap though, it just puts me on the kerb all four wheels. It gives me a penalty there, very frustrating. Into Tetra Rouge then, on the right side, where that tarmac opens up here, you can even use a blue marker as well. You're basically going to dab the brake and hope that the car remains stable through the corner. This car is very unpredictable in terms of its braking, it really, really is. But fortunately we survive uh, and we continue on as uh, we hit the nitrous button here. And uh, heading down towards the first chicane, on the left hand side, I'm going to use my normal brake marker. You can use a 200 meter board if you want. I actually use the this barrier dint here, the indent where the marshals are. That's what I use as a brake marker. I'm braking just before all my normal markers because I'm in a road car. But if you look down on the bottom right hand side, <laughs> drift all into the barrier. Uh, that was Bob over there going into the barrier. <laughs> Brilliant. Right, now penalties. Uh, the penalty line not too bad here um, because the car's brakes are so shocking. You don't actually lose that much time in the grand scheme of it. Obviously, Garden did because it was two seconds. The half a second, it's not the end of the world. They're still not overtaking me yet. There goes Consta. Uh, and we're going to be side by side with the French driver, Mass, who was the one who just tapped me over there. It wasn't intentional. They just want to get around the corner. Uh, so nothing major here. But heading down towards the next chicane then. On the right side, you're going to see a row of trees. And then there's going to be a little bit of gap in the trees. That's my usual brake marker here. There you go. Highlighted for you right there. Uh, but uh, as I say, I'm braking just before all my normal markers here. And we're going to drop down the gears. Uh, we're actually going to go for a very decent move here on the French driver. So uh, they slow down a little bit too much here. So I think, okay, I got the inside. Grigo there has had a bit of a, a moment. But through there we go. As uh, we continue on now, we're going to be in constant slipstream. Um, but let's fast forward once again down towards right hander here. So Mulsan, I said this, this the car's brakes, I've said it several times, it's very sketchy. So I would actually brake closer to this, to this curb and try and straight line it. Maybe even overlay a little bit to stop the car rotating. Um, but you're gonna see Consta really slow up here and I have to really just slow up behind. Uh, whereas someone behind there goes a little bit too deep. So you can see quite quickly the difference in braking just from different lines and the car just not reacting in the same way if that makes sense. So we're gonna go for the move here. Um, now, normal um, braking marker is here. However, I'm about to mess this up. I really, really, really am. But brake a little bit harder than I do here. It was at this moment that he knew. He Peggy 18. Oh. Yes, uh, a little bit sketchy there. Got it all sorts wrong. In to the Indianapolis I went. Uh, yeah, it was just a bit bad. I just didn't brake hard enough, and then the car got, went all out of control. Anyway, entering our Narge, on the right side, there's some trees. I always use these trees. Uh, obviously, I've not got as much speed here, so I'm going to brake way after them, but I'll be braking at them here uh, if I'd have done Indianapolis correctly. So, through I go, and now I'm just going to belt it out of here. It's a four-wheel drive car, the uh, the old Yaris, so we could 
continue on now, heading towards the Porsche Curves. Now on the left hand side of the Porsche Curves, you have a dark green piece of, I um, don't know what it is, AstroTurf, Tarmac, whatever it is. Uh, I use that as my brake marker here. Now with this Yaris, it's all about stability and car control. So make sure the brake balance is around zero. Don't put it anywhere else. Maybe even go minus one. You, the whole idea here with this car is you have to keep it sort of straight. The weight in the middle of the car. The minute it starts going left and right, you start having problems. Which is why I'm trying to bounce the car through here and not use the brakes at all. Unfortunately, you have to use them a little bit for that corner and I didn't. So I'll lose a little bit of time there. And then through a go. You notice again, I'm just trying to keep the car stable without using the brakes. It, it's critical to make sure the car stays stable. Now, heading towards the last chicane. This is where it gets tricky. Now, Consta suffered a problem here, and I suffered the same problem. So I've got the brake in, first of all. So I'm using the pit entry there. You can see where it arrows off, right and left. But basically, what you're going to have to do here is try and balance the car and brake a little bit softer than I do here. Now, I'll put the anchors on, and then look, you notice they're carrying too much speed. So now the car's all over the place. It's now trying to rotate everywhere, and it's it's just awkward. The pendulum effect of the weight is really happening there. Try and avoid that. Consta got... Uh, a two second penalty I think for that but still managed to finish P2 overall a bit of an iffy race if you're lower down in the driver's blitz it's going to be a problem now that's it for race A then let's head towards race B welcome to race B then here at Tokyo it's specifically East Inner Loop which is a track we never really used and now we seem to be using very often so maybe they've seen the uh, the bright side to this circuit because I think it's quite a good circuit to be honest but even so let's have a look at the race details then we are racing four laps here at Tokyo it's a rolling start and we are on racing hard tyres as you can see in the background it's group 3 machinery normally I say pit what you like for group 3 in this instance don't pit the McLaren F1 be the fastest on the straights and happy days let's jump to the race then and I'll talk you through it in a little bit more detail here we are then at the start. Now, my SR was quite low here, so it's a bit of an interesting lobby. We have Mamas! Mamas is back. I, you probably guessed that from the title, to be honest with you. Uh, so we've got a mixture of Mamas, DS, ES, AS, and uh, people not setting times and setting times. and picking all sorts of cars. But as I say, don't pick all sorts of cars. Pick this car, McLaren F1. It's very, very fast on the straights, which I will demonstrate to you uh, right now. I was going to say later, but right now instead. Um, so off we go then. Rolling start, nice and easy. Uh, as we head off. Now look how fast we catch up to the Volkswagen, which is in itself is a fast car. I mean, this is bonkos how fast this car actually is. As uh, to the right we go then, uh, and unfortunately we're out of slipstream now. So hoping the Beetle will come to the right there, but uh, it didn't. Volkswagen slowly picking up speed here on the left. So I was hoping to try and box in, not quite worked out here. So he gets a good run there, does uh, Vitali, and then towards the braking zone. Remember, on this kind of hairpin, stay on the inside to be a bit safe here. Uh, but uh, the Hyundai hits the barrel. We hit the barrier, barrel, not barrier. Barrier doesn't move, but the barrel does. Uh, and we continue on, so up to P10. So up ahead, you can see all sorts again. We've got an FT1, we've got an RCZ. Uh, we've got uh, Vitali, who is the A driver here. Um, trying to get through the field here. We're trying to have a look at that. the Norwegian. Not going to quite work here on that FT1. Runs a little bit deep. I thought they were going into the barrier, but they managed to, you know, save it. It's a fair play to them. So now I'm trying to just trying to go for the run here. Is it going to work? So where can I go? Where can I go? Down the inside then, and uh, we get that job done and dusted. So the RCZ breaks quite heavily for that corner. Wasn't expecting it at all. Trying to go around the outside. We get cut off there. Trying to pull back. Just trying to find a way around the RCZ, but they go into the barrier here and. Yeah, penalty. Rip. Like, I mean, what was that about? He even ghosted. I got a penalty for the ghosting, I think. Maybe, I don't know. But anyway, we continue on. So, um, these guys have a fight through the chicane. Never good. So, up into a Pete Steve then. We should go. There we go. Happy days. A little bit of a knock into the barrier there. Uh, so, we get the penalty applied to us. And then we continue on. And then we're about to get absolutely ram raided from behind there by Papa the Frenchman. Uh, I guess he just got a little bit confused where I was on the circuit. I was sort of in the middle of the road, to be fair. So, through we go. And uh, we're going to continue on now. So, you can see we're two seconds behind the Subaru up ahead. This is why you use this car. Look at that gap come down and down and down and down and down and down. And look at this. So, two seconds is now nothing. And we sweep past them as if they're in a different category. Never mind, different car. Uh, as we head towards brakes. So, turn one then. Where do you brake? 150 meter board or the lamppost on the right if you want to use that. Obviously, I change, I mix and change between those two. But I'm using a 150 meter board just before it, by the way. I had a lot of slipstream there, which is why I'm breaking exceptionally early. But just before the uh, 50 meter board should have you stopped. And you want to take this double apex. You know, make sure you clip both corners there. And we continue out the corner. And this car's fairly stable on exit. If you turn it, overturn it a little bit much, it will get oversteered. But it shouldn't matter. 
matter too much here. Oh, brake balance is all in the description as always. Anyway, heading towards this right-hander, basically looking for the 50 meter board here. Uh, that's where you normally brake. I'm having to brake a little bit early here because I'm on the inside of the Spaniard. Uh, but we should have this nailed nice and easy as well. So, uh, you know, nice and easy with these brake markers. They're right above the circuit. It's in your eyesight. It should be very easy to spot. Now, here's a, a nice marker. See the start of this red and white arrow? Start of that. Start turning in. Now, occasionally you might clip the barrier on the inside. But it's a good marker. It is a good marker to get your turning right. As you see here, nails us beautifully through that corner. And you want to use how the track goes. You notice how here it, it straightens up there. That's my turning marker then for this corner. Absolutely perfect. A little bit of a lift off here. And then as we head to this left, it's lift off. Don't break like the Porsche in front there. Just lost a lot of time there uh, because of that. But we go down the inside. And then for the uh, the chicken here, the chicane, the 50 meter board again. Just before that break. I'm... The goal here is to try and keep the car stable and also avoid hitting the barrier. If you can do that, you'll absolutely gain a ton of time because obviously the exit has a long acceleration period. So if you can maintain five extra mile an hour through there, you're going to gain heaps and heaps and heaps of time. So if you want to improve your qualifying time on this circuit, focus on that chicane. It will be critical to your lap times. Same for this last corner as we approach it now. So on the right hand side, you can notice the sort of sound barrier come up here. There, that's that sound. That sound deadening basically for the road. Uh, I think anyway. But the start of that is with the brake marker. That's what I use all the time here. Very good brake marker. Um, and basically, it's a like a double apex. You're gonna hit it, go out, and come back in. I didn't hit the first apex. I was a million miles away. But even so, we continue on. So I said this McLaren is fast. And you saw how fast it was against the Volkswagen. We can see the Volkswagen and me are sort of similar at the moment in terms of speed. But watch how much we start to gain on this Volkswagen as we get towards the top end here. So obviously we were very similar, but now we're getting towards the top end. That gap is going to start dropping very, very quickly. Here we go then. So the Volkswagen has just hit that wall and look at that gap start coming down very, very, very quickly, which is why you use this McLaren. Look at it drop. It's dropping like anything now. Absolutely dropping like a ton of bricks, um, but Nothing really happens in the rest of this race, to be honest. So let's jump towards the end then. And that's the end of the race. Oh, well, congratulations, you won the race. Fair play there. We get the fastest lap there. Happy days. Um, so I think this race could be quite iffy. Uh, that penalty, by the way, cost me SR. One penalty cost me four SRs. So just be careful that possible DR reset if you get two, three, four penalties there. So you're going to have to be careful. Uh, you might have some good racing. You'll also have some bad racing, as you saw at Turn 1. Let's jump to Race C, then, and uh, let's head to Japan and Fuji. Well, we are in Group 2. Of course we're in Group 2. It's Super GT once again, not Steve. But happy birthday to Steve, all the same. Um, we are going to be seeing some Shadow Realm entries today. And we'll talk about the Shadow Realm rather than Narnia. I know someone complained that I kept saying Narnia all the time, as it's Steve's birthday. Shadow Realm is the name of the game today. So, Race C, let's have a look at the details, then. It's 13 laps here at Fuji. It's a rolling start, so nice and easy. Make sure you warm the tires up, though, on that start. Finish straight. And we are only on racing medium tires. Fuel usage times four. The fuel, a little bit iffy. Just got to be a little bit careful, you know, have it in the back of your mind. And tire wear is times five. So the Nissan, of course, is going to be up there. It's always the best Group 2 car in the grand scheme of it. Maybe the older cars might work out in terms of the speed. Who knows? But I'm picking the modern. GTR, Super GT car, let's jump to that race. Here we are then at the start of the race. And you can see most people are in the GTR. We've got the old Lexus in there. Lexus is probably a good shout. I wouldn't pick the NSX, let's be honest here. <laughs> That's going to be a bit sketchy with its tyres later on. So you saw my brake balance there. As I always say, brake balance in the description. So I'm using plus two here. Maybe you can get away with plus one if I'm honest. Um, but we'll talk about that later on in the race when we get towards the end. Here we go then. So, start of the race. Now, don't fuel burn at the start like I did, like a pleb. Because, as I say, fuel actually is a little bit iffy. But I managed to sort of sort it out during the race without using fuel map. So, you don't have to use fuel map at any point in this. Don't worry about that. So, heading towards turn one. You can see here, I'm just warming up the tyres a little bit. Just a little, little bit of a small weave. Uh, if you didn't know, when there's tyre wear, um, there's temperatures involved. Now, to be on the safe side, always go on the inside there. But I'm actually getting a position from the Portuguese driver who is being safe. I decided to risk it a little bit and to get that position. And somebody else had narnia it. I think somebody else went wide there at turn one. Oh, no. I said Narnia. Shadow Realm. They went to the Shadow Realm. Apologies for that. Anyway, through we go uh, with another position from the Italian. So, round we go here. The right-hander. And you see that NSX up ahead. Uh, so we head towards breaking zone. They both go deep. So I'm thinking, oh, can I go for this? Can I go for this? Oh, so tight there. 
with the driver, but we should have a bit of good action here coming up there with the Italian and the Brit. So we're going to go down the inside as they went to the left. I thought, oh, excellent, here we go, let's do this. It was a breaking zone we go, and we basically are going to stop here. <laughs> um, this is how tight it was. Uh, it really was tight. Oops, Spaniard's been to the Shadow Realm there, and uh, through we go then. Okay, so let's see what we can do here. Lots of cars. This is obviously losing us a lot of time very quickly here to leader. Consta just gets it wrong there, going a bit too deep. Apologises for that after, as well as Consta. As it into us the left, we go. And through we go. Look, <laughs> NSX is so far off here. He's actually at the other end of the Shadow Realm there. So through the right-hander. And uh, we get plenty of space by the Spaniard, so shout out for you for that. He obviously knew I was going around the outside, but uh, gave me loads and loads of space. So thank you. You can see the fuel there, 8.7 laps. Yeah, it's fitting that race, Tidge. That's not going to work. But we'll talk about fuel saving uh, in a little bit because you can fuel save and not lose any time, basically. Uh, and that's what I do in this race. So we're going to continue to turn one. We're going to talk about the trap guide, the lap guide then, essentially. So in towards turn one, the, the uh, pit lane exit line, it straightens up. That's where I normally break. You can use the start of the grandstand on the left-hand side as well if you really want to. But I was using the pit line straightening up there as uh, as my guide. I had to leave a little bit of space on the inside there as the Spaniard went up the inside. But we survived that. A good bit of racing there between us as we continue on now towards turn two. Now turn two, you're breaking quite late here because we're on the medium tyres. You want to use a 50 metre board, but just before it, not actually on it, but just before it, 50 metre board, brake, fourth gear, chuck it in. Um, easiest uh, thing to do in the world here. It's got so much grip. Try not to run too wide. Be careful that curb glitch that can happen there. So this corner, stay in fifth gear. Don't do what I do and go to fourth here. Stay in fifth, just bounce the throttle. And as you head down here now, you're gonna look for that 50 meter board and before the 50 meter board, you're gonna start braking. But you wanna brake in a straight line. So even though I'm pointing as if I'm gonna go off here, brake in a straight line, release the brake, and then turn in. And you notice how I release the brake there and I start turning in. I miss the apex a little bit, but it's only lap two. Remember, I don't do any practice before these. So it's just, you know, getting my speed up very quickly. Um, trust me with what I'm saying because eventually I've done 13 laps and then I know where I'm at sort of thing. So heading right down towards the uh, chicken then. On the right hand side, don't use the Dunlop sign. There's a piece of tarmac there. You want to brake on that or around the area. This car has so much grip with the medium tyres, you can brake quite late here. Now, I get a little bit wrong here to be honest with you because I just got my braking slightly wrong. But that piece of tarmac is beautiful for your brake marker. Heading out here then, on the right hand side you've got the uh, the light or the, the, I don't know what it is, the announcement uh, pole, whatever it is, on the right hand side, it's the thing I always use, I point it out in every single food you race, it's perfect for braking. So we're coming into here, second gear, oh yeah, the chicken by the way that we just passed, do it in second gear. Heading towards this left hander then, end of the kerb is when you want to start braking, and you've got to be have to be careful about people diving up your inside, if you're going to go for the full time trial line, just be careful of that. As you see, Ultra just gets it slightly wrong there. So just held up a little bit here. You see Consta right with my trumpet. As uh, we then jump on the inside here. Now on the right hand side, where that orange bit is at the end of the barrier. I talk about it all the time. Perfect brake marker here. Obviously, depending on the lines, you're going to have to be careful of inside, outside, all sorts of lines. Uh, and just be wary of other drivers. Um, speaking of other drivers, by the way, there's an absolute moron in this race. So I hope you're looking forward to seeing that in a second. Or a few minutes, anyway. Uh, as we continue on now. So I'm about to jump over to the right side. Go on, Consta, have some. Oh no, not quite. Ultra decides he wants it there. So we continue on towards turn one. Now we're gonna have to keep an eye on the radar here. Um, because obviously turn one, the prime overtaking spot really. So if you look on that radar, Ultra goes for it. Does get the car stopped to be fair. Just runs a tiny bit deep, nothing major. Lovely bit of racing there with Ultra, so fair play, shout out to you. As you just see, uh, who was that? Somebody had just died there, I think it was DJ. Uh, but we catch up a little bit, you notice my fuel is a lot better, it was 8.7 laps on lap one, it's now 8.7 laps at the end of lap four, so you know, we've had three laps of uh, free fuel. So look at this, three wide into turn one, so I'm trying to decide where to go here, and I notice that there's just enough of a gap here down the inside, so I think, oh, happy days. I left enough space there, beautiful bit of racing between us there, as we continue around that corner. Up into P, Steve then. Again, happy birthday to you, Steve. Uh, heading towards the left, then. This is a bit of a scary place to be on the outside of this corner. One place I wouldn't recommend being in because that'll happen um, with the driver. So whether he meant it or not, I don't know. But uh, I don't think he meant it personally when I was racing because you can tell when someone's being malicious or not. And he would, if he was being malicious, turn one, he would have really cut me off. So I just think it was you know, a, a mistake, just understood a bit too much. And that's why I always recommend on those kind of corners, don't sit on the outside. It's the same principle there. As uh, we continue here towards the chicken then. So Big Earl there uh, just goes a little bit deep, the Frenchman. 
Formula 3 we go, and there we go, that's that second gear I was talking about. I thought I was going to get a penalty for that, by the way, in the race, and I didn't. A bit peculiar, I think I had dirty tyres though. So, love the bit of racing here, so this is why, you know, this I did trust him that it was a mistake, and this is why. It was perfectly reasonable to do that, because he gave me just enough space there, beautiful bit of racing, or she, um, in towards the last corner we go. So, some beautiful racing here. And uh, we continue on through there. So we're going to try and use Big Earl's slipstream here. And when he goes, go straight through him. Happy days. Look at this. Bob's your uncle. Job done. So let's see if the driver behind there. We had a good race. Uh, he's going to go for the move in turn one. I can tell you now he's going to go for the move in turn one. I, I'll just spoil it there. You see the slipstream come into play here. As we head there uh, to turn one. And the braking marker, as I've been talking about. But outbreaks himself and uh, goes off. To the Shadow Realm. I nearly said it again there as we continue on now. So you can see here uh, my short shifting now. So I'm short shifting right where the gear recommendation is. And what that what that does is it fills my fuel up enough. And actually I, I've got too much fuel by the end of the race. So if you do need to save fuel in this race, just short shift where that gear indicator is. The right, right at the end of it, the red number there, right at the end of it, just shift there. So we have a good little move on upper here or uppy or uppe. I'm not sure. But a bit of racing here, side by side again, in towards the left we go. Now this is a BS lobby, I think it was, at the time. So I was actually pleasantly surprised with how much clean racing was happening here. Um, so, you know, shout out to all the drivers I did have some clean racing with. Not everybody was clean, though, as you're about to find out soon. Um, so up A is going to go, or P is going to go into the pits. And uh, so he's the leader. So nine seconds the gap to the leader as we came onto that start-finish rate. Here's the pit timer for you. If you're interested in pitting, I don't think it's faster to do this. Um, it is if you're in the lead and you've absolutely stonked it, mind you. Um, so it looks like it around once it comes down and settles down. So it was 9 seconds, 1.8. So what is that? That's 6 point... Uh, no, it's 7.2. There you go. 7.2 seconds for a pit stop. I've no idea if it took fuel or not, but uh, I don't think you need to take fuel, if I'm honest. Uh, it'll be just a tyre change. Uh, maybe worthwhile if you're in the lead. Uh, potentially not worthwhile if you're in the mid-pack because you're going to have to take a load of cars again. It's going to lose your time. So, we continue on then towards the left-hander here. And uh, you see KB Racing Inc. up ahead here. So, um, I'm not sure what's going on, to be honest. Obviously, if the leader goes past you and they've just come out of the pits, personally, I'd just let them go. There's no way you're staying ahead of them for that remainder of the race. If you just look up ahead, under braking, he just darts left for some reason and hits the uh, Italian. No idea why. So, that did get my alert up a little bit here. So, I'm thinking, oh, okay. So, I'm going to try and go for my normal move here. So, I'm just alongside and then... There was a little bit of a turn in. Maybe he wasn't happy with that. I don't know. Maybe it's ping related and he didn't realise. Who knows? According to here, I noticed and expected the dive. So I just left the gap open. I was like, fine, fair enough, whatever. I'll overtake you at the start, finish straight. So I go towards the left and uh, I'm going to have a nice little move here. And then this is going to all kick off because I go to the outside and he starts to turn into me. So I start turning back and then, yeah, this is all going to happen. Very frustrating. Goes for the pit maneuver on me. What the hell sort of thing. quite proud of that you know the recovery and then they go in the pits anyway so a bit of a moron to be honest you know you can see it's got an M next to his name there which means moron um, no idea why they decided to do that it is what it is we carried on racing they weren't going to catch us up anyway and we're actually you know we lost a bit of time to the leader but you can see we're not losing massively to the leader as uh, through here we're actually going to catch up to the NSX this is why you don't pit the NSX boys and girls just see it go off to the realm once again as uh, through we go you can see we're actually going to catch up to P14 as well. Here we go then, into the chicken. I'm going to scare them a little bit. I always do this with uh, bat markers. Just go straight through them. Scare the living crap out of them. <laughs> because then they're like, whoa, I'm going to get punted. No, you're not. Don't worry, you're ghosted <laughs> as we continue on through there. So, an interesting race. We had a moron. Um, we had an interesting week, to be honest. I really wouldn't recommend race A. I, 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 very rare I recommend race A, to be honest. Race C should be fine. You should have some good racing in race C, if I'm honest. Um, you can have some, yeah, you know, and start, finish straight. You have some side-by-sides. I mean, I'd say this is a BS lobby. It's not a place I normally expect good racing, and we've had some brilliant racing in this. Uh, you see my fuel, by the way, so I had loads spare in the end. And, uh, yeah, race B, a little bit iffy as well. So, personally, my choice is race C, which is actually a good race. I know it's quite a common race with Super GT and Fuji, but, you know, it's common for a reason. It is quite good. It was DJ Easy who spanned at Turn 1 there. But that's going to be it for this week. Um, there's going to be a stream there if you want to watch that. Or it might actually jump you to it now. I saw a new option. So keep an eye out for that one. Um, my logo's there if you want to subscribe. And there's a video there if you want to watch another one of my videos. Um, but as always, please like it if you like it. Dislike it if you disliked it. But please let me know why you disliked it. 
Um, but that's going to be it for me now, folks. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you in another video or live stream very soon.